All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am joined by Amy La Liberté, who is in New York. How are you doing, Amy? I'm good. How are you, John? Excellent, excellent. And Amy creates simple streamlined systems that help you drive up profits 10 times quicker, whether you manage, whether you want to manage your own money or you're looking for a full service virtual CFO. Mm -hmm. And what we want to talk about today is why entrepreneurs need to understand their personal money story before setting any business revenue goals. So let's, uh, let's baseline this a little bit, mm -hmm. Amy. What do you mean by personal money story? So your like how you relate to money is an important relationship that you're going to have in your life, right? And so how you already have a relationship with money personally will transcend over into your business because how you do money personally will be how will translate into how you do business, how you do money uh, with your business. And so it's like to have that baseline and to have that awareness is incredibly helpful so that you can enter into your business, whether it's you're just starting out, you want to scale your business, having a firm understanding of how you manage your money and how you relate to it personally will definitely show up in your business um, as your as an owner. What are some of the what are some examples of different ways people relate to I mean, I mean, I know it's how long it's a piece of string, but um, what are some what are some different ways that people relate to money? Well, so I think that there's a lot of 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 information out there on like the the right way to do money, and there are ways to do money. There's good ways to do money, and there's not so great ways to do money. However. What matters is how you do money. And what I mean by that is, you know, there's this whole like debt is bad. You should never be in debt. Debt is bad. But we both know that there's good debt and there's bad debt. Mm -hmm. and really understanding which is which and how you can use debt to leverage and scale is super important and critical to understanding how you can scale a business, but not in a way that you're using it against yourself, but using it in a way that helps you drive scalability. Yeah, that's a that's a, a that's a good example. Um, yeah, because let's face it, in 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 people's personal finances, yes, we're we're always lectured that debt is bad, and there is a lot of debt that is bad. Uh, <laughs> you know, overextending yourself, but there are ways you can obviously leverage debt to to move yourself forward. Um, and so, how many people do you think, when you go into go into business or set up business or or in business, uh, in charge of budgets and stuff like that, who who don't have any real grasp of fundamentals of finance? Well, I think that there's a lot of people that are entering into business now. So what I do professionally is I help you manage your money. So like I mm -hmm. go in knowing I love relationships with money. I want to show you how to have a relationship with money. But if you take anyone who let's say that you have someone who is a digital ad agency they're not going into business with like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I get to manage my money. They want to create a digital environment for their clients. And so, I mean, what the statistic is, is 82% of businesses are operating from, um, from AR to AR, from invoice to invoice. And yep. so their cash position is, is, is super delicate and one lapse payment can create a tailspin. And so understanding that, there needs to be intentionality behind the management of the money that that really helps, I think, build up a greater confidence with money. Number one and number two, it allows you to understand how the money comes in and out of the business so that you can make really great decisions to scale your business. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a, I think that's a great point because I do think that, uh, that a lot of times, as you said, I mean, people are so focused on doing the thing that they want to do and they either, ignore, avoid, or pay lip service to the things that they don't want to do. So in your example, if you're more into the creative side, uh, the money and the, uh, the money side and the financial side is going to be something that you probably are trying to avoid as much as possible. But when, as we know, when you avoid things or when you don't pay them proper attention, what happens? Well, 
you end up in a cash position. That's a problem. You can't make payroll. You can't. And then you take on debt that you may not want to take and that you didn't intend to take. I mean, I don't think that everyone is like, oh my gosh, I'm going to start this business and I'm going to overspend. But as a profit first professional, that's what I often see is that, you know, people want to have greater profitability, but the reason that they don't is because their operating expenses are so out of alignment from what is a recommended uh, percentage for their size business. Yeah, and I think part of it sometimes is is the the pervasive kind of culture around business. I mean, everything is around growth, 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 hyper growth, and and you know, focus and people focus on on the on the top line constantly and growth, 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 and. And the bottom line and all the expense side and all of that, that was always kind of pushed to the side or people think, well, that's really tedious or that's, you know, cutting, cutting expenses or managing expenses, you know, that's really tedious stuff. Um, but ultimately, that's what builds the foundation for a strong business and, and an enduring business. Yeah. And I think the other part, too, is then like you add in this whole element of you know, business owners know that depending on the type of structure, like I'm speaking in the United States, is yeah. that, you know, for taxes, right? They don't want to pay, they want to pay as limited as taxes as possible. And so they think, okay, if I drive my expenses up, I'm going to lower my net profit, which means I'm going to lower my tax liability. And what they do when they take that mentality, they create a cash flow situation. And so it's this whole like spiral. So like if we can agree that taxes is an indicator of profitability and that's what you want and that you want to scale in an intentional way so that it's aligned with how you want to live your life and what you want to create in terms of the legacy with your clients in your life and the world, if you can mirror all of that together, like that's sort of the beauty of the business, right? I think that's what we all want. We all want to make a difference in what we do. And yes, we want to make money and we want to have profit and all of that, but we need to like do it in a, like if we slow down, we can then scale so much faster. Uh, and it's interesting, interesting comment there too about slowing down to scale faster, because again, that kind of goes against the pervasive, you know, uh, as you, what you would call the, um, you know, wisdom that's out there about, you know, you have to be fast, you have to grow as fast as you can. And this is where, you know, we see a lot of companies get into problems, or they take on, you know, massive loans, or they get venture capital involved, and they give them like tons of money, but they force them to spend it immediately and, mm -hmm. and all of that, and things get things get chaotic. So what you're saying here is, is just take that step back for a moment and, and slow down in order to move forward faster. Yeah. I mean, I think what, what, what happens is that, you know, people don't want to do like their bookkeeping, let's say, yeah. and they don't want to do it because it's past focused. Right. But here's the thing. If you take the moment to do the bookkeeping and that you can see what happened in the past, you can use it as a driver into the future. It provides you with the breadcrumbs in order to give you information to drive, you know, and, and I think that the avoidance of it is that you're missing a key part of the entire equation, if you are interested in driving your business forward. Um, and, and I think once business owners start to understand that, and I often find like when clients are coming to me, they are either at multiple six figures or multiple seven figures, and they have been doing their own like bookkeeping, accounting, and they want their weekends back and they, and, or they're just like, I, I feel like I'm doing all this I'm making all these sales and I have no money in my account. I don't understand why. And then like they bring somebody in like me and, and we like figure it out and then we can say, okay, this is what's happening. Like, let's make some adjustments here and then let's, let's move on. And when they just take that moment, they're not only getting somebody on the team that is actually, you know, that is like the, an expert in that point, point of it, but they're also becoming a greater leader as a result of taking responsibility for the fact that the finances are an important component of their business. Yeah, I, I think that's a really incredibly important, uh, important point. Because, you know, as you alluded to earlier, uh, you know, what can often happen in a, in a business, especially in a small business or a, or a solopreneur or somebody who's building up their own business is, uh, they they ignore not that they ignore but they don't realize the, the cash flow issue 
and that they think, okay, I've started off great. I've got five clients now. Everything's going swimmingly. And they look at the, you know, the revenue that they're going to generate from these five clients. Now, unfortunately, these five clients don't pay you on time. Some of them don't pay you on time. Maybe one's a bigger company. And, and unfortunately, the reality is bigger companies don't treat small companies and individuals very well. And they know that they can get away sometimes with extending payment. Uh, and so all of these issues suddenly come to a head. And I think that's the, the, the hardest part often is for people to understand the difference between revenue and cash flow, even if they know it, maybe logically, um, the reality of it can be very different. Yeah, no, absolutely. And so, you know, with, when I'm working with my clients, there's three reports that we always look at. We look at the income statement, which is the one everybody wants because they, mm. they want to see the revenue. Um, we look at the balance sheet. But then we also look at the cash flow summary because it's the thing that keep, that that marries the two items together. So that if you think, I don't understand, I had X number of dollars in revenue, but I don't have that in my bank account. You're going to see, like, if you if you paid your credit card, of course, like it's moving yep. off of your balance sheet. So it's it's like really like marrying that. And I think again, <clears throat> back to what we started talking about before was about the personal finance side of it. And, you know, we don't like think of ourselves and like our families as like little micro businesses, right? But if we do, we can see that like, okay, we made this much money this month. We had all these expenses. So why don't we have what's at the bottom in there? Well, we probably have a mortgage. We probably have credit cards, but understanding that you can apply business principles into your personal life and really like make meaningful decisions. Like, when you start doing it on one side, it automatically like moves itself onto the other side. It's a symbiotic relationship. Yeah, and I think and I think the key point there you said is meaningful and and, and paying attention. And I think that's uh, uh, I think that's sometimes what people struggle with because, as you said, I mean, people go into business for different reasons, but generally speaking, there is some passion around what they're doing and that's where all the focus is and maybe the same at, at home maybe there there's things that they're passionate about maybe managing household finances isn't isn't one of those um and i, and I think part of it is comes down to self-awareness doesn't it and recognizing where your weak spots are absolutely and i think so often we don't take time to really reflect on our awareness so if we feel like, you know, what I hear sometimes, cause I, I work with, with clients one-on-one -on -one with like co coaching money, either personal or uh, business. And they have these stories around money that they can't make money. They can't um, leave their nine to five. They can't do all these things. And so when you really start to like slow down and listen to like your thoughts about money and you're not creating the results that you desire. You can start to see like, well, if you continue to think about it, of course, you're going to keep creating the same result. It's just perpetuating itself. If you feel like I don't, I, I don't understand money and you feel confused, are you, is your action really going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go do my like personal financing. No, you're just <laughs> going to continue to be confused. So yeah. <clears throat> No, I think I think that's a I think that's a, a great point. And I think the other part too is is to make conscious decisions. You either say, okay, I am going to educate myself on finance uh, and I'm going to become you know really good at this and I'm going to pay attention to it, or I'm going to acknowledge that I'm probably not going to um, become that good at it or whatever, and I'm going to reach out and find somebody to to help me. Uh, and I think that's I think that's part of it. You have to make those conscious decisions because you can't fall in between. You can't sort of go, I'll, I'll kind of see what I can do around the finances or whatever, um, or I'll or I'll, maybe I'll ask somebody for a little bit of advice. I mean, I think concrete decisions are always best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because then you're making like the, I think you said earlier intentionality. It's like yeah. you're making an intentional decision. So there's no like. I don't know how that happened. Well, no, if you're intentional about it, then you know exactly why it happened. Right, right. And I, <laughs> and I think that's part of it is being, is being, it's getting back to the self-awareness piece and that's being honest with yourself. Uh, and, and I think that's where a lot of um, businesses come unstuck a little bit is because, you know, they, <clears throat> it's like ignoring a problem and hoping that it goes away. Or as we said earlier, maybe just naively deciding, well, 
all of my customers are going to pay me on time. Well, no, they're not. Sorry. No, no. <laughs> well, and then the last thing that I, I, I want to just reference about the personal stuff is the fact that like we grew up in a, in a time, like I grew up at least in a time where like money was discussed in the family, but not in a way that it was like, I mean, things like money doesn't grow on trees. Yeah. What do you think I am? The bank of America. Mm -hmm. And so like, it wasn't like a positive and not that like my parents were negative about money, but they certainly like, I didn't like, I felt like what I understood was you worked really hard for money. Like that was my takeaway from, from all mm -hmm. of it. And, um, and I also think that like in the U S at least like the like public education system doesn't have like a formal, like um, education curriculum for financial literacy. And so you wonder about things with like student loan debt and all of that. It's, it's, they're taking on this debt without fully understanding the ramifications down the road of, of all of the debt. And I think that has to do with the fact that we're not talking about money. We're not talking, like we're not becoming financially literate in order to make really sound decisions as young adults. And then as full fledged adults with like families. No, I, I couldn't agree more. And I think financial literacy is one of the things that's shockingly missing from, from formal education. And, and to be honest, I mean, there's a lot of things that are focused in on that. I, I, mean, I mean, I have a 16 year old son, like, you know, he will often come to me and say to me, this is so waste of time. Why am I learning this? I'm never going to use it. Um, and he's, and he's not wrong for some <laughs> of the things, right? right? Um, <laughs> But it would be nice if people taught financial literacy and especially, I mean, I see them, he and his friends, like they do, they have all sorts of little hustles going to make money or whatever. They, they learn the financial literacy themselves. They teach themselves. So it's no wonder that there's a lot of people who come into business um, without really any clue of, of money management. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's definitely like, I mean, there's an origin story that I want to course correct. I want to make sure that like we have a very open relationship with money in, in our household. And I encourage other families to do that because like money matters, money matters in mm -hmm. our world. Um, and it's, 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 it's part of how we do business personally and professionally. And so to know how it works, even at the most basic level will serve you for your lifetime. Yeah, and we'll and we'll hopefully like take a lot of stress out of your life, you know, because learning the hard way, uh, it's called learning the hard way, hard being the operative word for a reason, mm -hmm. because it because some of those lessons can be very, very harsh. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's why, I mean, I was encouraged. I mean, I think the first time I had a job where uh, I had any budget responsibilities, the first thing I did was, I think there was, a, there was a book with like financial management for first time managers or something like that. Uh, I can't remember, but I would always encourage people to, to, to pay attention to that side as much as the, you know, the people management, the project management, or come to somebody like you. And what are some of the, just, just quick, uh, you don't have to name them, just what are some of the examples of when somebody has reached out and like worked with, worked with you, what difference that has made to their business? Well, so one of the things is they're coming to me and they have like, they've amassed debt and they want to mm -hmm. pay the debt off. And so we create a plan in order to get the, we start to take massive action on paying down debt. The other thing is, is that when we do that, we also start becoming really efficient with our operating expenses, because oftentimes there is a lot of low hanging fruit on the expenses that could easily be cut without causing any sort of compromise to the quality of the service delivery. And so, and then it's just like the understanding of what the money story is in the business is being able to say, like, I understand what is happening with my money and I'm no longer burying my head in the sand, pretending that like something's wrong or something's not wrong. I mean, most mm -hmm. of there's times when like, they're like, oh, this wasn't that bad. So it's like, they have greater confidence and clarity around the business and they're able to increase sales as a result of it, because they're feeling assured and confident that their business is successful. Yeah, and I, and I think that's a really good point too. Is is sometimes, um, you know, good and bad surprises. But bringing, but I think that shows a level of maturity and confidence when you bring somebody in from the outside, or when you say, you know, I'm not very good at this piece, or I uh, I definitely believe this somebody who's got 100% expertise in this is better than me with a little bit of knowledge around it. I think that I think that breeds confidence, and I think that shows shows self confidence in in whoever is bringing you in. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I think it's that they're freeing up their time 
to do things that make money for their business. If they're not doing this, if somebody else is helping them keep the money organized and make sure all the things are moving, they can create more products, have more sales, and that's a win-win. Yeah, no, no, absolutely, 100%. So, I mean, <laughs> I would always highly encourage <clears throat> encourage people to to look at core competencies and then and then be honest with yourself. Uh, here's the things I'm really good at. Here's the things I'm okay at. And here's the things, frankly, I'm either not good at or I just don't like, and I'm never going to be good at it because you're never going to be good at something that you really, really, really don't like. And therefore then decide to, uh, you know, bring in, um, bring in expertise. And the beautiful thing in nowadays, uh, Amy, is it's so easy to get like, to get fractional help or, or variable help. And they don't have to be sitting in the same neighborhood as you are. I mean, you have, you have access to the world, quite frankly. Absolutely. I mean, I work with clients all over the United States. Um, the majority of my clients are not in my backyard. And, mm -hmm. um, and especially in light of this past year, being able to have a virtual business um, and to be able to support business owners in a fractional way is, is amazing. And what they're able to, so if they're looking for someone in the CFO type capacity, they're not going to hire a full-time person to do that. So like the fractional model works, it's a win-win because the support they need is the support that I offer. And it's done so in a way that they get the results that they want with the expert that they need. Yeah, perfect. Great way to finish, <laughs> exactly. Get the, ex the results you want for the expert that you need. Uh, all of the uh, Amy's information is going to be below this video, uh, all the all the contact information and everything. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. All right. Well, my name is Amy Law Liberty. I am the owner of my virtual CFO. And what I do is I provide bookkeeping, CFO, and profit for services for six and seven figure business owners. And I'm also a certified life and money coach. And if you want to hang out with me, I can be found at www.myvirtualcfo.co forward slash Facebook. I have a free Facebook group that you can come and I do lives and we talk all things money. Excellent. Uh, well, thanks very much, Amy, for joining us today. Oh, great advice. And I would encourage you to, to check out the, the Facebook group and all of that. Uh, as I said, the links will be below. Uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.